Hello my love, happy new year. Welcome to the first video of 2023. I am so happy to be here, so excited to finally be back in front of the camera because it's been a hot sec and I first do need to adjust where I've been. I'm so sorry I've been gone for the past month. It wasn't intentional but to be completely honest and transparent, my mental health was all over the place in December. I created a video all about seasonal depression and how to overcome it and I really felt like I was on top of my game this year. I thought I was on top of that seasonal depression. It wasn't gonna come for me and lo and behold, it came for me and it's something that towards Christmas time and the end of the year, I always feel a sense of anxiety, um, especially knowing that I'm going to be around a lot of family and friends, which I absolutely love. I love that social aspect. But when I lose the balance between social life, productivity, business, and every every area of my life when i feel like i'm starting to lose that control i become quite overwhelmed so i immediately knew i needed to shut down well not necessarily shut down but i needed to just take a break take a reset i deleted all the apps off my phone got rid of instagram instantly felt better got rid of my tiktok got rid of everything i fasted for a whole week as well and it was really the reset that I needed. So apologies that I wasn't open, letting you know what was going on as I was going through the motions, but I'm back now, I feel amazing, and I'm so ready to bring you some amazing content. So in today's video, I thought it'd be really fitting just to share exactly how I completely changed my life in the past six months. And I made a video about this last year, I think it was around April time last year, I created a video on how I wanted to completely transform my life. And then of course the 12 week year started. And now I'm reflecting back on the full year and the full transformation I went through throughout the whole year. It was truly incredible. But for right now, I really wanna share how I completely changed my life in the past six months that I've just been. When I reflect on the past six months, that is honestly where I've seen an explosion. That's where I've seen the most growth. I moved to London, I quit a temporary job I was doing, I've made the most income through my YouTube and my sponsorships. I built my relationship with God. Well, I was already building my relationship with God, but in the past six months, I've seen the most transformation and my whole identity has completely shifted. And it's so funny because me and my boyfriend always make this joke that when you watch my previous YouTube videos from a year ago, a couple of years ago, even six months ago, I always look like a completely different person. I sound different, I look different, my voice is so high pitched and it's, it's just mad how I, completely transform over and over again and I know that it's just me shifting my identity shedding those previous layers it's me evolving it's me chipping away at all of the layers that are preventing me from being the person that I'm destined to be so I I'm a firm believer in identity shifting. I talk about it all the time and I truly believe it is possible to change your life as quick as you want to, definitely in six months, but if you wanna do it in three months, 12 weeks, two weeks, you can change your identity by making the decision that you're gonna do so. So in this video, I wanna share how I completely transformed my life in the past six months, what my life currently looks like and how I'm really planning for the future. So the first step to really transforming your identity and going through that identity shift has to be self-belief. So you have to truly believe that you have the potential, you have the resources, and you have the ability to change your life. And I know this video is titled Change Your Life in Six Months. That's just an arbitrary number. You can change that number to whatever you want. But I know for me, I went through a complete life change in six months. So if you set that as your goal, it is possible, but you have to have the belief in yourself. See, the thing is when it comes to identity shifting or recreating your identity, setting goals, achieving goals, success overall, 
we tend to look for evidence of what is possible. So when you're wanting to achieve a certain goal, if you've achieved it in the past, you're gonna look for that evidence that it is possible because you've achieved it, you know the route to it, you know exactly what you need to do to replicate that success that you would have seen before. Your brain is automatically gonna look for evidence of how you can achieve this goal, how you can get there quicker. It's so that we can consume less energy. When we already know the blueprint and the steps that we need to take, then it's easier to just take those steps and we believe it, we have that self-belief already ingrained. But when we don't yet have that evidence, what a lot of us are doing is instead of creating new evidence, instead of creating that path, instead of creating the roadmap, we're just conforming to what we already know and what we already see is possible. So this becomes the barrier what stops a lot of us from achieving the goals that we wanna set, from changing our identity, is that we don't have that self-belief that we can do it because we haven't seen the evidence. So what we need to understand is we actually create that evidence. Any new habit that you formed first started with you having that self-belief that you're capable to do so. Without that self-belief, you're not going to take the action needed. And isn't it interesting how other people can see our potential sometimes more than we see it in ourselves, and it's similar for how you may be able to see it in other people I know for me I'm the first one to think of so many ideas for other people on how they can improve their life how they can change the situation how they can reinvent themselves how they can make more money I've all I'm always throwing ideas at other people but when it comes to myself sometimes I don't always see it it takes for other people to realize that potential in me and to bounce those ideas off me so we end up in a situation that we probably don't need to be in for a lot longer than expected because we don't see our potential we don't see the possibilities so that's why it is really important to have people around you to have a community to have people that you can bounce ideas off of but ultimately it is gonna come down to your self-belief because somebody could give you all of these ideas and, and show you the path and show you the roadmap, but if you personally don't believe you're capable of doing that or achieving that, then it's just not gonna happen. You have to work on first ingraining that self-belief that you can achieve whatever it is that you want wanting to do. So whether that's you telling yourself every single day, I can achieve this, I will get that. Just that small shift in language can really help to build that confidence that you need in order to succeed. Instead of saying, I'll do it one day, I'll try, say, I'm going to do this, I will do this, this is my identity, this is who I want to become. And an example that I use often is when I was building my first business, I knew that I wanted to become a coach, I didn't know how, I didn't have any experience, all I knew is I attended a two day seminar, fell in love with coaching, knew that's what I wanted to do. And that very next day, I began calling myself a coach. I literally changed my Instagram bio to coach and I just put it out there that I am now a coach. That's the identity I'm building for myself. Everything else, the logistics, the facts, all of that will come later on. But first I had to start by shifting that identity and that belief that I can do this and I'm going to do it. So the next thing is to focus on building the pillars. So when it comes to changing your life, reinventing yourself, you want to see it as you are setting up a foundation. It's almost like you're rebuilding your house, the house of you. So you wouldn't want to be building a house on a rocky foundation. You wanna make sure that concrete is solid, it's not moving, that house is there for the long run, for the longevity. No little storms are gonna break it down, no tornadoes gonna to come and rip through the walls of your foundation. You wanna make sure that is completely solid solid and that's why I did. So look at the pillars of your life and a simple way you can do this is just by using the wheel of life. This is something that I share on my template that I have for completely free which I'll leave down in the description box which is based on the 12 week year as I've shared but a section within that is all about completing a life audit and what that looks like. So I like to use the wheel of life which is assessing the eight core sections of your life so health, spirituality, relationships, love, fitness, career, finances, education, personal development, all of that kind of stuff. So you want to be looking at each area of these life, oh, of these life, you want to be looking at each areas of um, your life 
and you want to be assessing those areas so giving them a rating out of 10 prioritizing these areas looking at which area needs my attention right now where is my foundation rocky which area needs stabilizing so the rest of the areas can thrive now the reason why this is so important is because you need to learn how to prioritize effectively you cannot be focused on completely changing your wardrobe when you've got no money you cannot be focused on building a business when your health is deteriorating. So you have to make sure that the priorities are set correctly. So when it came to myself and I was looking at areas of my life, I knew that I wanted to expand my business, I wanted to make more money, but an area I really needed to focus on, especially last year, was healing. Because it's like I was taking one step forward and then five steps back. And it's because I wasn't, healing certain areas in my life i wasn't healing certain in insecurities that i had i wasn't healing certain things that i had going on with my relationships with my childhood so i knew that it was creating a barrier where i couldn't move forward because my foundation was rocky i was emotionally unstable and i knew that's something that i had to work on before i could throw myself into so many different business projects and doing all these things even the thought of doing that just made me feel completely overwhelmed and it's because of my foundation so you really want to be looking at which areas in my life need the most attention right now so once i've healed that area every other area will then begin to thrive and i can truly reinvent myself i watch a lot of these videos and i know there's so much content out there on how to reinvent yourself and a lot of these videos look at all these different areas in life which yeah that is great but ultimately when you're pouring so much focus into so many different areas all at the same time you're making small progress next to nothing so it's better for you to really double down on the areas that are going to build a solid foundation. So once that's built, you can keep layering brick by brick. So first, let's focus on health. Get your health in check. After health, let's look at your finances. Get your finances in check, get your career in check. And then from there, just keep on building. So the next thing is to identify your barriers. So this is also something I like to call the excuse loop. Whenever it comes to us wanting to change our life, build new habits, reinvent ourselves, in the back of your mind, there's always going to be that voice that's telling you, oh, but this, oh, but what about that? Oh no, you can't do that. Oh, what if this happens? What if, what? All of these limiting beliefs are going to pop up. That is the enemy wanting to keep you down. That is the enemy wanting to basically tell you to stay in your lane, to not change, to not reinvent yourself, to stick in your comfort zone. And that is something we're not doing. So we have to learn how to fight back. And the way we do that is by identifying what are these barriers? What are these limiting beliefs? Writing them down, becoming so familiar with the limiting beliefs that are going to try and hold us back. So when I was thinking about, okay, I know I need to move. I need to get out of this city. That's before I moved to London. I knew that I needed to move cities. I needed to completely change my environment. I knew that I wanted to hit 100,000 on, on YouTube, which I now have. I've got the plaque to prove it. Um, I knew that I wanted to improve my relationship. I wanted to improve my relationship with God. I knew that there were certain things that I wanted to change in my life but I also knew I had that voice telling me why it wasn't possible. So what I did was write down all of the excuses and all of the barriers that I may have had that would prevent me from achieving the result I wanted. Whether that would be finances, security, not having the right resources, not knowing anything, like whatever the barriers, whatever was holding me back, I wrote them down and then I came up with solutions. That's what you want to be focusing on. To reinvent yourself, to become the best version of yourself, it's going to take you to become solution orientated. You cannot fall back into your old ways. You have to always be looking forward, but always finding solutions because that's how you're gonna up level. That's how you advance yourself. And then once you've identified what is holding you back, the next thing is to start making irreversible decisions. A lot of the time, the reason why we may get to a certain level and then fall back down or achieve a certain goal and then not be able to replicate the success again is because we have a one for in, one for out mentality. 
you know what I'm talking about when you maybe dipping your toe into something, you see a bit of success, but then you dip your toe back out. You want to be making decisions that throw you right into that deep end so there's no going back. And I'll give you an example. I have moved to London, as you know. Me moving to London was a huge leap for, well, it wasn't huge, huge, but it was me stepping outside of my comfort zone and making an irreversible decision. I knew once I signed that tenancy agreement, that means I've agreed to this much rent, I've agreed to pay these bills, I've agreed to move city, there's no going back. So you wanna be thinking of what are some irreversible decisions that you can make how can you make sure you've signed that contract so you're signing the agreement to your next level to becoming the best version of yourself what are some of the things in your house currently you maybe need to get rid of throw out if you're wanting to start your wellness and health journey if you're wanting to start creating better eating habits but you've still got a cupboard full of snacks how is that aiding towards your growth? Because you know that you've got one foot in, one foot out. You say you want to become healthy, you say you want to make better decisions, but you've still got your comfort there. You've still got the plan B waiting for you. Get rid of all of those. If you say that this year you really want to become a content creator and you wanna take it seriously, what's an irreversible decision that you need to make? And I know I've said before that you don't need to buy equipment and a lot of people say, oh, you don't need equipment to start a YouTube channel but maybe for you it's gonna take a little investment. Maybe you need to invest in a new camera. So once you look at that camera every day and not being used, you can say to yourself, right, I need to make a start. That could be your irreversible decision that you make. So think about what are some of the things that you can do to really boldly step into your next level. None of this, oh, I'm just testing the waters, I'm just trying things out, I've still got my back up here. No, go all in. I remember when I went so Solo traveling for the first time I just booked the flights I booked the flights I booked the ticket at that point I didn't have any accommodation I didn't really know anything about the area but I knew I wanted to make an irreversible decision now of course you can say well you still could have just not gone no when I invest my money in something it's happening and I knew that there was an energetic exchange when I made that payment that, okay, now I need to shift into the person and the identity of somebody who solo travels. And that's exactly what I did. So when you take the first step and when it's somewhat irreversible, automatically you then start looking for solutions to get you to the outcome. The next thing I wanna talk about is, I've kind of already touched on this, but it was that, I prioritized my healing. So in the past, well, the past two years, let's be honest, ever since I started therapy, I have been prioritizing my healing. I've been going to regular therapy sessions for the most part weekly. And yeah, I've just done so much healing. I've healed my relationships with family, friends, my partner. I've had the most amazing two years of healing and I'm still going. Healing doesn't stop, as I always say, where work in progress is. There's always gonna be deeper layers that we can heal and evolve as we evolve, as we enter new seasons in life, as we enter new ventures, there's always gonna be that healing that takes place. When I began to prioritize healing, even sometimes over productivity, I saw the most results. So my channel has been blowing up and I hit 100,000 in a time where I was really prioritizing more healing than the productivity itself. Rather than doing more, I was focused on slowing down and being more intentional with the actions that I was taking, with what I was focused on, doing a lot of healing, yes, through therapy, but also my spiritual journey as well. So I prioritized my walk with God towards the end of last year. I received deliverance and that was so transformational for me so I just want to encourage you to really prioritize healing alongside productivity it doesn't always have to be one or the other at times yeah you may have to slow down in order to really focus on healing certain parts of you before you can catapult into your next level but do not sacrifice the internal work that you need to be doing for the sake of productivity or reinventing yourself or changing yourself. Because what will then happen is you'll be making all of the changes on the surface level and your exterior will look like you've changed and your exterior will look like you've reinvented yourself. 
but internally you're going to be crying <laughs> let's be honest and I don't even mean to laugh but sometimes I watch like some videos on YouTube which to me can seem very surface level and yeah they're saying all the right things they know what to say and they've got the right lingo but internally is the healing being done that's really what we want to be focused on and through my videos I try to well I don't try you know we don't use that word but through my videos I really want to maintain the balance which is why sometimes I'm not as consistent as I probably should be because I know that a lot of the times I'm healing I'm taking time to reflect to really understand before I come in here and share information so that really was a huge part of how I was able to transform my life within the past six months and reinvent myself to the point where sometimes I even watch a few of my old videos and I'm like wow she she looks so different man like who is she <laughs> and it's yeah it's interesting how how we see those changes in ourselves when we are doing the inner work so it's so important to do that and the final thing I want to leave you with today is to find a community that aligns with where you're going with what you're wanting to achieve with who you're wanting to become this is something that probably is the most difficult when it comes to reinventing yourself because you're constantly being reminded of the person you once were and a lot of the people around you most of the time it is out of love but they want you to remain the same person that they always knew because it's convenient for them it's easier for them to be around you to approach you to understand you when you don't change so you're always going to have that tug and pull it's going to be very conflicting when you're around the same environments constantly day in day out when you're trying to become a new person and i've just used the words try again when you are becoming a new person you have to also submerse yourself in environments that are going to support that and this is something that i also find challenging especially around christmas time which i shared at the start of this video i find it quite difficult and overwhelming because for example I'm quitting alcohol and I've decided this year that I do not want to be consuming alcohol maybe on the very very rare occasion very rare occasion but for the most part of this year I don't want to be consuming alcohol so I found it very difficult around Christmas time being around my family and friends who love to have a drink I mean there's nothing wrong with that um, I found it difficult because everyone was asking me are you not having a drink do you want to have a drink and it was difficult and I did fall and I did have drinks because I felt that immense pressure to conform to my environment again I'm just keeping it real so that was challenging for me and I realized that yes I love my family I love my friends I'm always going to be around them but I also need to be facilitating environments that support the up level that I'm wanting to go on and the journey that I wanted to go on so you also have to do the same find people who are going to support you and encourage you and who are also on a similar journey I'm not saying you have to discard people I'm not saying you have to replace people but on a day-to-day -day, you want to prime your environment for the success that you want to see so yeah, that is it for this video. Thank you all so much for being here. It feels so good to be back and to feel like myself again. Honestly, December took me out, took me out. But I'm back and I'm better and I'm ready for this year, ready to drop some fire. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, as always, make sure you give it a massive thumbs up. Oh, I thought I wasn't recording then, all my days. Um, but yeah, that is it for this one. Sending love to you. Have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see you soon. Bye.